Okay, we're going to continue the, the, the previous topic about the environmental risk damages and climate change, but from a bit different approach. And I, thanks to my colleagues that were speaking before us, we can, you know, bypass the first slides. But the difference of the approach is that uh, we consider the, uh, the environmental damages, including climate change, as a as in fact a damage which is caused by human economic activity in in a general sense. So. Uh, more specifically, every deal, transaction, or contract has its collateral damage. And when you buy a gas or air ticket for your air travel, it is, there is a collateral damage uh, to the environment, to human health uh, related to it. And in fact, in the nearest years, it has already become a business custom to assess the, uh, the damage related to any sort of economic activity, transaction deals in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent. It is a very convenient thing to, you know, to evaluate environmental damage because it, it reflects not only uh, climate change damage but also uh, combustion of fossil fuels, air pollution, energy efficiency, and uh, that's why it, it's uh, not only important but very convenient thing to quantify the, the environmental damage. For example, a few years ago there was a notorious study uh, <coughs> evaluating the damage related to indoor cannabis production in, in the United States and uh, the, the damage is, as you can see, the energy expenditures equal to $5 billion, 1% of electricity consumed in the US, and uh, one kilogram of indoor cannabis production equals to 4.6 tons of CO2. And the uh, recommendation was to, you know, to legalize uh, marijuana because outdoor production would eliminate the need for indoor production. Uh, so that's the, <coughs> the basic uh, scheme that we're talking about. There are three principal participants of the, of the model. The seller, the buyer of goods and services, and there is a uh, you know, uh, mitigation, outs, uh, mitigation outcome provider and the mitigation should be equal or greater than the collateral damage uh, produced by the deal between buyer and the seller. And once these three participants agree on the amount of damage and on the price for uh, mitigation outcome, then in the ideal world, you know, the, <coughs> the problem would be settled and solved. Uh, but in real world, it's far more complicated because there's all, there should be someone who uh, evaluates, assess what the collateral damage is, and there always is a person uh, or an entity who wants to be in charge and tell the buyer, the seller, and offset provider what should be settled, what shouldn't be settled, uh, what, how they, the damage should be assessed, and everything. There, there is a regulator who wants to be in charge. <coughs> And that's why, you know, uh, the, although this market for uh, mitigation, for example, of uh, climate change damages is, is tremendous and it's, you know, uh, at maturity it will be at least $10 trillion. And, uh, but it is fragmented into pieces and uh, numerous barriers uh, prevent from, you know, uh, fungibility of the instruments, there are dozens of uh, climate mitigation programs and, and new programs appear and, and units and instruments, carbon units, and uh, I guess that uh, one of the examples was a previous presentation that 
a new very interesting program and the new carbon unit uh, is proposed. But basically they all operate with one and the same unit, one and the same asset, one ton of carbon dioxide emissions uh, or one ton of carbon dioxide reduction absorption. But they are not integrated. And uh, the, the regulators really, you know, choose and select who can assess the uh, who can assess the damage, who can uh, participate in the in the market. And our initial target uh, was and still is to uh, to provide an opportunity to overcome the barriers, external barriers between those dozens of markets and systems and registries and uh, to uh, internal barriers which do not uh, let anyone who would want to participate really participate in it. Uh, so that's why we've created a, a platform that allows anyone or any existing uh, or new mitigation program uh, to launch its program on blockchain and to, you know, cooperate, integrate to the extent they want to. They might be fully independent or they, want, or, they want, or they would want to merge the markets or they would want to have a, uh, you know, a unified token, a unit. Uh, but any of those dozens of markets, uh, carbon programs or instruments, carbon compliance units may enter this this blockchain, and anyone can actually right now go and la launch his own mitigation program. Um, so, what we have achieved for the moment, we have, uh, you know, issued, uh, transferred the units from a conventional registry to the blockchain and uh, performed pilot transactions. And we have also performed a issuance of environmental units of carbon credits uh, bypassing a conventional registry directed to blockchain, which is not easy because in a real world, well, you still have to, you know, to have a, uh, a very reliable auditor, in our case it was KPMG, uh, to verify, assure that those reductions are real and comply with the rules. Uh, so, actually, right now you can enter the, the, uh, the decentralized application to trade or to retire to, to offset the carbon footprint or launch your own program. Um, in fact, as the, you know, cryptocurrencies also have uh, quite a significant carbon footprint. And for example, the Bitcoin network related carbon emissions are equal to those of emissions of Cyprus and Ethereum network are smaller. Emissions are smaller, but still they equal to the annual emissions of Moldova. So it's pretty easy to imagine that there is a, 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 a there might be a token proposed to offset the exact amount of emissions related to one Bitcoin or to one Ether. Uh, we have a very vast, you know, development plans and uh, 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 developing the smart contracts and, uh, uh, and everything. Uh, but for the moment, we might say that the, the proposal of a high quality assured uh, environmental units is already provided at the platform. Now that uh, we are working on the, on the demand. As I've described, you know, the, the problems related with regulators, uh, registries, opposition to a new technology that would basically deprive the regulators of much of their authority and would probably kill uh, the traditional registries. So that doesn't go easy. And a very, one very important thing is to, you know, in a strategic perspective to eliminate the need for uh, really physical uh, auditor verifiers participating in, in this process and sub substituting it by uh, Internet of Things. Uh, 
algorithms plus a validation by the network. And from this point, I'd probably like Sergey to, to take over. Um, good day, my name is Sergey Onshakov. I'm a research team leader at AeroLab and our architecture in IPCI project. My part of presentation will be about how we can prepare Mars for DEFCON 50. As you know, Mars today is not a good place for humans. It's a very cold place and atmosphere is not a friendly for our breath. And if we resolve issue with the logistics, with the SpaceX or other space program, next question will be, can we make Mars a little bit comfortable for DEFCON 50? And it will be a surprise for you, but Paris Climate Agreement can help us. Because if you try to find some abstract or executive summary about Paris Climate Agreement, you will find main task of Paris Climate Agreement. Main task is keeping a global temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius. And it means the Paris Climate Agreement is the first planetary terraforming experiment based on economical game. My main work is uh, research uh, capability of using human to machine systems. And the last three years we're working on robot economies concept. We want to build first planetary supply chain with direct economical communication between humans and machines. But Paris Agreement today is uh, not a human-to-machine system, it's a human-to-human -human system with uh, strong reputation requirements. And these requirements for me is ridiculous because we cannot do a planetary experiment with this requirement. But if we shift Paris Climate Agreement on a zero network, Paris Climate Agreement can be human-to-machine system. And look at the screen. I will try to explain how it can be work. We have uh, manufacturers around the world who want to be involved in Paris Climate Agreement. At the same time, we build smart cities around the world. And these smart cities have uh, many types of different sensors what can collect data about carbon footprint around manufacturers. Smart cities can send annual reports to Ethereum network. We can install additional package on Ethereum network validators, additional packages with carbon credit emission algorithm. And after that, Ethereum network can issue carbon credits. Green humans can buy these credits and our collected funds can be spread between green economy manufacturers, smart cities who collect data, and Ethereum network validators who are involved in this process. And if it will be work, we just can change the reforming task from Paris Climate Agreement to prepare Mars to DEFCON 50. With the same scheme, is the same software. So today we have a smart contract package for carbon credit market tested with real participants. We built a digitalized application for human-to-human -human communication and my team, AeroApp team, now try to build uh, first, carbon footprint sensors network with Ethereum network validators based on our area distributive. In the next year, we will show first algorithm for carbon credit issues based on Ethereum network. And we, we, we want to build first service for reducing your carbon footprint only with carbon credit based on Ethereum network. Here you can find more information about project and if you're interested in Aero Distributive, you can find more information on live website. So keep on the way to DEFCON on Mars 
and we will try to prepare and do it much more comfortable. Thank you.